Hi, Kat here with Standing Stone Kennels, and I have Quest with me today to show you how we trim dog's nails. We get this question a lot. How do you go about trimming dog's nails? How do you get them used to trimming dog's nails? And the answer to that is, A, we do this with our dogs on a very regular basis from puppyhood on. If it's a litter that we've raised and developed, we've been trimming their nails every week since they were born. If it's a puppy that we get from another litter, um, that's something that we start on the weekly with once they turn eight weeks old. It's important to be patient. It's important to take your time. It's important to be relaxed and feel comfortable when you're doing this because they can feed off of your nervous energy. So if you're nervous about quicking them or you're not sure what you're doing and you're trying to rush, they're going to feed off of that and they're going to get more anxious. They're going to fight more. They're not going to be comfortable. So take a breath, be patient, stay calm and trim on their nails. So wait a second. I just noticed, did you seriously match that beautiful purple collar to your beautiful purple shirt? Yes. <laughs> I didn't think anyone would like Ethan call me out on it, but yeah, I did literally coordinate my outfit with Quest collar. It looks nice. Thanks. Um, okay, now that I'm blushing, we are going to be using these nail trimmers that we have on our recommended items page on our website. They are a small Safari is the brand name. They work really well. Uh, they're small. This is the size we use on puppies. This is the size we use on adult dogs. As you can tell, Quest is an adult. So um, this smaller trimmer though, allows us to have more control over the amount of nail we're taking off and allows us to do a little bit of shaping as well. Uh, we're not gonna use a Dremel today, but hey, in the future, we might throw a video out here that has the use of a Dremel as well. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, nail guard. So this nail guard that shows, you know, oh, you should take that much off of the nail. Don't do that. Slide that out of the way and don't use it. Uh, because it's more about where the nail needs to be trimmed and not where this tells you the nail needs to be trimmed because nails wear differently. Dogs need their nails trimmed more or less depending on just how their nails grow. And so we can't use some man-made device to tell us how much to take off. So I'm gonna go ahead and scooch Quest a little bit out of the way. I gotta sit. Ugh. Helpful. So a lot of times you probably see us trimming the dog's nails on their backs. Yep, yep, get, get comfy. So she is going to get flipped onto her back and I'm gonna give her a second to get comfortable. Uh, like I said, she has had her nails trimmed like this for a very long time. I actually think you were in um, another nail trimming video that we did. But I'm going to trim her right side, front and back while she's on her back like this, but then I'm gonna show you another technique of how you can trim nails um, with her sitting and standing up when we do her left side. So hopefully I don't get my sides confused. So I want to go slow so that you can see what I'm doing. She's super calm and easy about this. And she's going to give us um, some patience to work through trimming. So her nails are black. That's okay. another question. Hold up one second. I'm going to show you, I, I'm going to try and zoom in, but when you move I'm all around. over the place, it's like, oh, Blair Witch Project. Ah. Can okay. you, can you see your paw there? Yeah. Oh, what about there? Oh, there, oh, there it goes. Okay. I'm done teasing you. Um, I'm done teasing you too, Questy. So her nails are black. People always say, well, I can't see where the quick is on a black nail. That's so much harder. Well, I could probably trim her nails with my eyes closed because it's more about a feel of where that trimmer catches, that clipper catches on her nail uh, than seeing a quick. I'm not going to trim them with my eyes closed, but I could. Maybe I'll trim them with Quest's eyes closed. She'll probably fall asleep here during this process. So first I'm gonna just show you and let me know if you can see this. Um, I can't on that one, here we go. Um, give it a second. Oops, sorry. Oh. Hit the wrong button. Okay, <laughs> there we go, we're good. My cameraman's gonna get fired. Um, just kidding. So I take that clipper and I run it under the bottom edge of this nail and it catches, it's catching right there. So now I'm going to make a perpendicular cut. That seems like a decent amount to cut off, but I could take less or I could take more depending on where that catch point is. Then I'm just gonna clip. No blood, no foul. 
Just kidding. I knew that there wouldn't be blood. Um, so then I can look at that nail and I can definitely take off more. Uh, that's not soft yet under there. So we're gonna go ahead and take another thin slice off. It's important to mention just what you just said there. Taking small little slivers at a time is a, a pretty good idea. We're getting there, getting a little bit closer. Um, uh -oh. So can you see that very light spot in the middle here? Um, yes. If I feel that with my nail, it's soft. So that's the more of the live tissue that we're talking about. The shell, that's all hard, that's all dead. And that's what we're trying to take off to get closer to exposing that quick so that the nails can stay short. Or if you've got dogs with really long nails, getting that quick exposed will eventually shorten that nail as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little shaping where I'm just cutting the edges off around that. You could also do this with a Dremel, um, but like I said, I don't have that right now today. And by shaping, I'm just taking the sharp edges off. Now that nail's really smooth, it's not gonna scratch me. And we're allowing that quick to start being exposed. Okay, ready for the next one? So I'm gonna feel that catch point and I'm gonna make a perpendicular cut. And I can feel these trimmers are starting to not be as sharp. I can feel I'm having to exert a little more pressure than cutting. So this for me would say, hey, I definitely need to look at getting a new clipper because that pressure, especially if you've got a dog that's not extremely comfortable about getting their nails trimmed like Quest, um, can feel more uncomfortable than the actual cutting process. So slow down on your shaping there just a little bit and see, you're getting, basically show the angle that you're gonna take off that outside edge. So I'm allowing it to kind of catch and bite in. Yep, right there. You see that? There, no. I'm too close, sorry. Too close. Yep. We, we don't have a macro lens, but that, allowed me, if you can look at the nail from the top Let's maybe, see. you can see oh, that yeah. angle a little bit more that I just made. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna do that on the other side now. Good, and now you should be able to take the top part yep. off of that. Yep. And then when I take the top part off, you see that? Yep, we're close in, so easy with your movement. And another little Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So you can see that is a nice rounded, it's not gonna scratch me type of nail. So we're gonna do that same situation with this next nail. I'm scraping under that bottom and I can, I don't, can you, it's so hard to show how that catch feels, but I'm trying to make it dramatic. It catches, I cannot pull it past that catch point. I mean, I could if I really worked on it, but it is catching there. So that is where I'm gonna make that perpendicular cut. And then I'm definitely not quite close enough to that quick, so I'm gonna take a sh very thin shaved part. You see that? Mm -hmm. Off. Maybe a little bit more. The smaller, sharp clippers are what make you um, able to do those little trimmings to kind of fine tune where the nail needs to be. Yep, because you can get to that catch point, but that's not exactly as short as they maybe need to be. And it's if good we start, it's a good start. But if we don't work backwards from there and shorten them even further to expose that quick, your nails are still going to grow out and get longer and longer. Getting close. Again, it's a little bit of a feel. Seeing if I can get right in there to see that transition. And a little sharper nail trimmer would be beneficial for me to get those thinner slices. But again, I can feel with my nail um, that squishy part in the middle there. 
And she says she can feel that. Do you see her kind of saying, oh, I feel that. That's letting us know that that live tissue is starting to become exposed. Because she's like, oh, I can feel that. It's not just poking on her hard, dead shell of her nail. So we're going to go ahead and shape that one again by taking that. Hey, your paw's in the way. Put, put your paw down there so we can see. So get our little fluffy toe feathers out of there. But you see that angle I'm going to take? Just one second. Quest, you're being so patient. Yep. So it allowed us to take that side. And again, a little side. And just that top. So then you can see that nice rounded nail. So her nails actually are kind of interesting on the bottom. Not all nails look like this. Um, but that hard shell around the nail is actually growing around the bottom. Do you see that? <laughs> Trying to get the little toe yep. feathers out of the way. So ideally we'd like to be able to expose underneath that a little bit as well. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that here today. It might be something we need to get the Dremel, Dremel for. Out. Yep. But I'll work on her last nail here. Again, it catches. I'm making a perpendicular cut. There's no point in making this kind of a, just the tip cut because we've got a long way to still go at that point. So find that catch point, make that perpendicular cut. Again, you don't want to angle back because that quick is in here. And if you angle back, though that's where you catch, you're going to take too much potentially off if you angle backwards. So perpendicular. Again, take a little bit off. Until you see that start to get exposed. Do you see that in there? Mm, just one second here. Yep, that line, you can almost see on here, on the, yep. you can see almost a line in the middle. Yep, there. and no. you can definitely feel that's where it's very soft. So we'll do a little shaping. As you can tell, I need a manicure as well. This uh, social distancing and quarantine have definitely not allowed me to go get my nails done. So I'm definitely looking forward to the potential of getting them done here sooner rather than later. Just a little bit of shaping. Okay. So that is her front nail on the right. Now her front nail or back nail on the right. So Quest is a bigger dog, a little bit longer. I'm a shorter person. So for me, I could reach all the way down here, but I could also flip her around. So I'll maybe do a couple nails with it this way and then a couple nails with her flip flop. So again, um, nails grow differently on the front than the back, but there's still gonna be that catch point. Okay. So we're gonna find that catch spot and clip perpendicularly. You can still do the same shaping. Did you see that cut on the edge? Yep. Do another cut here. And you can see how that kind of shaped each side. Yep. And then again, I can take that top angle off. It's perfect. Okay. So yeah, get your face out of my face because I got to see what I'm doing. Well, technically I don't, but again, I feel that catch point clip perpendicularly and probably take a little bit more off. Just a little shave. You see how little I'm taking? Mm -hmm. Trim, angle, angle, and angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin her right around like a good little baby dog. She just hangs you out. You spin that dog right round, right round. Quest is like, I'm not impressed. Okay, this foot. This is the foot we're working on. Paw. Dogs don't have feet, they don't have hands, they are paws. Um, so now we're going to do from this angle, just because, like I said, she's long. Um, it's hard for me to see what's going on at that end, but this way I can definitely see what I'm for sure doing, especially if you're not as comfortable with trimming nails. So taking the big portions off both sides, now I'm just going to do a little extra trim and a trim on each angle and that top. Same with this last nail. 
She's been so patient and so well behaved. Um, this is why developing this calm, relaxed temperament throughout this process is important. If she would be fighting and I would be fighting, A, she's probably gonna get quick, but also she's gonna learn that the only way this nail trimming gets done is if I just fight my little heart out. Well, if we can say, no, we're just gonna hang out here until you calm down and then maybe I trim one nail and if you're really fighting, then I'll just hold it and we'll calm down again and then we'll trim another nail. And then if you start struggling, we'll calm you down and trim the next nail and so forth and so on. And then if I was done trimming, I wouldn't just be like, whew, that's done. You're free to go. Fight your way free. I would want her to calm down and be really relaxed like this before I'm like, okay, we're done. So I'm gonna actually have her stand back up um, so that I can show you how trimming nails from a sitting and standing position works. Okay, I need you to sit up. She's like, meh. Puppies actually get their personalities and temperaments from their parents. Sit up, Questy. So having super, super laid back dogs like Quest mean that there's a really good potential that all of her puppies oh, will so have very similar personalities as well. So I've got her in a seated position. Okay, so now we are going to do her left paw sitting up like this. I'll try and make sure that you get a chance to see this. So I'm isolating one toe and taking and feeling underneath where that catches again. And then I'm making a perpendicular cut. And that cut was almost perfect. Do you see that little dot in the center? I want to see if I can get closer because this is a really good example. Oops, sorry. Let's try if I just move in this way. Who'd have thought we needed a macro lens? kind of do. It's still saying, no, I can't focus on that as close as I want it to. Well, maybe in post we can crop in just a little extra. Um, Such a patient. Okay, problem. there. You can see the little dot pointed out with your finger right there in the center. Everybody see that? Good. So. Perfect. That was, like I said, almost a perfect cut. Now we're going to go ahead and take that angle. Yep. And another little angle. Good to catch, there we go. And that top angle. It catches and clips. I'm just doing a little extra shaping, smoothing that all together. And you can see a nice smooth angle all the way around on that toe. Mm -hmm. Next toe, oops, dropped your paw. Oh, hold on just a second. So she's got a little, I just noticed this when I grabbed her toe, she's got a little sore spot in between her toes there. Looks like she's got something poked in there. I can feel it. Just a little bit, and this is common. This happens to yeah, dogs. They, really well. Yeah, that little little bump. So they step on stuff, um, and then they get poked. Yeah, and she yeah. says that doesn't feel good. Well, it's a little sore, so we're gonna have to doctor that a little bit and take a good look at it here when we're done with our nail trim. Uh, but just doing nail trims, it's a really good way of checking your dog's pads and toes and paws um, on a weekly basis. So. Get a good look there and know that we've got something to take care of. Again, find that catch spot. Trying to make sure you can see that angle there. Yep. And that was another almost perfect cut. Hey. Okay. She's getting good, folks. She's getting good. You can see that very center and it's squishy of that live tissue. Go ahead and take my I know, being so patient. Take my angle here, take my angle here, and my angle here. You can see how nicely that exposes oh, the rest of that quick. 
so it can wear and stay trimmed down. Next paw, next toe, I mean. Again, where it catches. Did I get you? <laughs> I hit me. So she's starting to pull a little bit, and that's why showing you the two different ways of finding, two different ways of trimming their nails, find what works for you. So Quest says, I'd rather have my paw back. I like laying on my back and relaxing, but I'm going to help work through this with her because some people are going to have this be the norm for a nail trim all the time. So we're just gonna isolate that toe. I'm not gonna give it back to her when she's pulling. And I'm just gonna take a little bit more off the edges. And I'm not going to allow her to get out of this nail trim by pulling. So now she's not pulling. You can see her paws just resting in my hand. And I can give it back to her. Good girl. Then we're gonna pick it up for the last toe. But we don't wanna give in to her and release her from getting her nails trimmed when she's pulling and fighting. That little bit of resistance and avoidance, if we give in to that, oh, and this toe is really hard to see because it's on the back side of her foot. So I guess I just kind of quick did it while I was talking. Um, but that type of avoidance and resistance, if we give in to that by just being like, oh, well, fine, I'm just, I'm done with this nail trim. It's just too much work for me. Then she's gonna learn, well, hey, I just pull and fight harder next time and I'm gonna get out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and stand her up to do that back leg. On the left side, I'm gonna turn her around so that you can see what I'm doing from the rear. So she's standing up kind of like you would with a horse and farrier. I'm gonna pick up this back paw. Pick it up, pick it up. She's like, I wanna sit, I wanna sit. And then you can kind of just curl those toes under. I don't know, can you see yep. what I'm doing here? And again, you just would scrape under the bottom of that nail to where it catches. Perpendicular cut. You can see I almost got a perfect cut with that exposure, taking off my extra sides. Maybe take off a little trim on the bottom there. Let you see that. Yep. Doing this where the dog also has some traction, so I'm doing this on the carpet, is a good way for her to not slip and slide with her legs all out from underneath her. Stand up, stand up. She's kind of sinking in on her haunches. Catches, clip. Take off that side, take off that side, and take off the top. I think we talked about this in one of our Yawas maybe, about how we trim nails and things like that, and everybody's got their own preference. Ethan says he likes to trim nails standing up like this. I prefer trimming nails sitting down and creating them in my lap, but. And when I do this, I typically put them up on the table too, so. They'll be up at more eye level or whatever where I can stand with them, but. But we each have our own preference. The dogs also have their own preference of how they like getting their nails trimmed, what works best for them. Um, and you just will have to figure out what's going to work best for you. Uh, but the number one things to remember are be patient. Don't rush this process. Don't let your dog get out of the situation if they're fighting really bad. Um, and be careful not to quick them. Quicking them happens, but if you quick every single toe, every single time you do a nail trim, your dog's definitely not gonna look forward to that process. It's not going to feel good. It's not gonna be relaxing. It's not gonna be enjoyable for them. So be careful and be confident where you are clipping. Don't use that guard to be like, oh, well, I can take this much off this time uh, because that guard is like we talked about, not a good gauge on every single dog and every single nail because even on Quest, some of her nails, I was able to take more off than others. So let us know if you have any questions. Let us know what you thought of this video, what you want to see more of um, and give us a subscribe and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.